the decisions you make today may impact your retirement. Hey, y'all, this is Mike from the Retirement Train Straight Talk, where I give you the simple truth every day in every video from my perspective. All right. A lot of folks out there, even friends of mine, talk about they're waiting for a magic number to happen, right? I'm not sure if it's a million dollars, two million dollars, right? Could be five hundred thousand dollars. In fact, there's videos out there stating how you can retire on these particular numbers. I beg to differ here, and here's why. I'm not sure a number is as important as your mission on what you want to do in retirement, right? And I wrote some things down here that I think may be good tidbits for you, and I'll get to them in a minute. Maybe the magic number is not what you should be focusing on. Maybe lifestyle change is what you should be thinking about, right? So I've mentioned several times back, maybe you should think about, you know, um, probably test driving your retirement income, right? So if you think you're, let's just say now you're making eighty, eighty thousand $80,000 a year, but, but you want to retire on 50, right? It's easy to say because you're making 80 and you can retire on easy, but it might not necessarily be true. There's a lot of factors there. There's taxes, there's 401k contributions, that all stops, right? Know what you want to retire on and see if you can live on it, right? So if you want to live on 40 or $50,000 a year, well, see if you can do it. But you really got to, you know, be true to yourself and see if that's a fact or is it just a fiction that you haven't really thought through and you're just going to do it. I'm here to tell you, if you don't get anything else from this channel, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. You won't do it. I just did a video on how we, you know, things creep up on you, expenses, right? The same thing will happen to you. It happens to me and I got a budget. I got a good budget. Still does it. What do I do? I crank it back down again. I realize, hey, you're starting to creep up and you need to cut it back a little bit. So these things are important. You might not think they are because you're making good money. All you see right now is that paycheck coming in and it's all good. Well, things will change when you retire. I'm not trying to discourage you or, you know, scare you, whatever the case may be. These are just facts, facts that from experienced people who have retired. Now, if you want to go out there and work part time so you can have the same income that you had while you were working, I get it. Nothing wrong with that. But remember now, you're on a time clock. I don't care what anybody tells you. You have responsibilities. You belong to somebody. Is it stressful? Is it not? Um, and we'll get into what stress does to you on some of the five things I think you should really focus on. All right. So maybe it's not the magic number that you thought you should have, but more importantly, um, the lifestyle changes that you think you need to make. Right now, you could be living really, really high on the hog, right? Make, maybe you're making one hundred twenty, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and you live in Alabama. I don't know, but things will change when you retire. You're going to have to soften up the blow a little bit, right? Um, you know, more importantly than than that, have you paid off your vehicles? Have you paid off your house? Right? Do you have a mortgage? Uh, do you have credit card debt? All that kind of stuff takes into account your retirement budget and planning for retirement. Again, the number's not as, as important as the action and the ability to do what you want to do. Because if you have bad habits going into retirement, you'll have bad habits in retirement. I guarantee it. A lot of folks, um, I've seen it. It's not pretty. It isn't. Then folks are forced to go back to work. Nothing wrong with that, but it wasn't part of the plan. That's all I'm saying. And for me, I'm a structured guy, you know, and I like to have a plan. And maybe you are too, but you don't realize it. So when you walk away from that job, you need to make sure that you're set. And one way is to test your living expenses and live on that budget that you think you're going to live on in retirement, right? We've talked about this four or five times already, but it's getting close now. You may be two to five, five to two years out from retirement. And so nothing like the present to start it. Get real. Or if you want to start it in January, that's fine. So you get a full year focus on it, January to January or whatever that works best for you. So I'm telling you, it worked for me. It was tough, but I did it. And I knew what I had to do. Now, luckily, I was almost making as much now that I was working minus the 401k and all that nonsense. 
So I was very fortunate there uh, with the military pension and so forth. So yeah, that, that, that was a big deal. You know, everything comes with a price, right? Sacrifice or, or your 401k needs to be bumped up if you don't have a pension, which now you're making a pension out of your 401k. That, those are facts. Uh, money doesn't come from a money tree or a fairy, right? Money comes from what? Money comes from planning. And you have to have the right number in the sense of withdrawal rates. The sequence of returns risk is there. The first couple of years when you retire, you just got to be cautious of it. That's all. All right. So um, these things that you plan for today will have an impact or don't plan for for today will definitely have an impact on your retirement. Believe me, if you don't get anything else from my videos, get this. You have to have a plan and a budget. It's clear and simple. There's no other way around it. Unless you're a millionaire, a multimillionaire, and you can afford to, you know, squander money away. But most Americans aren't like that. I hope you are. And I wish you the best of luck. I do. All right. So a few questions that I've asked myself, and, and he, here's a, a change in life over the years. You know, over the years, folks have been, thinking about, do I want to leave my heirs a nest egg, right? Well, doing my research, a lot of folks now are saying they'll get what's ever left over. They're not planning on giving them a certain amount of money. So in other words, they're not planning on a particular number. That goes back to my original question. Maybe it's not the number you should be focused on, but it should be more of your happiness in retirement and what you've worked for. I'm not saying don't leave anybody anything. I'm not saying that at all. But I think you should enjoy what you've earned for, uh, worked for, and what's ever left, well, God willing, you know, you give it to who you think deserves it. I mean, that's my thoughts too. I mean, again, life isn't easy. And so it wasn't easy for you. I can tell you that. I'm sure it wasn't easy for you. It wasn't easy for me either. So, you know, you got to plan accordingly. Um. People who focus on a number rather than testing your living expenses, you're in for a rude awakening. You really are because it's all based on your living expenses. If you can get that down and solid a year or two out, you shouldn't have a problem. And you should do, you know, you should do several things. But one thing I, I do is I pull for my investments when I have a big ticket item, right? That's what I do. Like my wife's dental this year was expensive. Heck, she's got to go back in again for something. But, yeah, that's going to cost me. Um, you, you know, maybe test drive it, obviously, a year or two prior to retirement. So pre-retirees, think about it strongly. Maybe you do that, um, yeah, a, a year or two. Test that budget. See if you can live on it and focus on it because it's going to help you in the long run. Um, no one knows how long we're definitely going to live, right? We just don't. However, longevity risk, I'm telling you, longevity risk is a factor. In other words, if your folks, your dad, your mom, your grandfather had a long life, well, that's something to factor in. I'm not saying it's 100% perfect, because it's not. Because if we all knew how long we're we going to live. If we all had a crystal ball, that would be great, I guess. We'd be playing the lottery every day. But we don't know how long we're going to live. So you got to have a, you know, equal balance here. Do you get long, you know, do you get um, different types of insurances, right? Long-term care insurance, those sorts of things may factor in. Because when you're in your 60s, long-term care policies are very, very expensive, y'all. I'm not sure you want to do that. But that's up to you. Um, there's several things you can do, and I don't want to talk about annuities anymore because folks get upset, but they're out there, and there's things that you should actually pursue to think about. That's all. Um, you can pay it yourself. You can use some annuities to do that for you, partial payments, right? Um, or you can have other assets that you can pull from. But long-term care insurance, Probably at 50, 55 is probably a good time to start really, really seriously considering it if you're going to get it. Because, you know, 
at least 50 to 60 percent of Americans are going to need some time of, excuse me, some type of care, either it be a nursing home or just home care. And it gets pricey, y'all. A lot of you have seen your parents go through it. Um, but I think there's five things that you shouldn't do. Okay. Number one, don't be undisciplined, y'all. You need to be disciplined in retirement. And it, in order to be disciplined in retirement, you got to be disciplined as a pre-retiree. And that's why I say try that, test drive that budget. Seriously. You'll thank yourself and maybe you'll thank me for it. I don't know. Uh, number two, you need discipline uh, to hedge risk in your portfolio. So in other words, you don't want to be 100% in equities, right? You want to have an equal risk on, you know, um, securities as well. I'm not sure if it's 60, 40, uh, 35, you know, 65, 5% cash. I don't know, but that's something that you need to really consider five to three years out prior to retirement to get that account set up for you. The last minute probably won't work for you because remember the sequence of uh, returns risk is brutal the first year. And if your account's not right that year when you retire, it could be dangerous. I'd be on the safe, personally, I'd be on the safer side in retirement for, for the first two years or so. You can always change things around in your IRA or your 401k as time moves on. But boy, initially, I'd be cautious. Number three, the emotional risk. Uh, it's just not the financial risk, but the emotional risk of retirement, being with your friends, having that work environment uh, to, to you know, lean back on. Um, that identified who you were at that time. You need to understand that, you know, after a while, your work friends are going to be dissipating, right? You're not going to have them all the time. You'll make new friends, but it takes time. And you need to be aware of that and function properly in retirement and not just get depressed. You got to be careful. Depression can sit in, y'all. So I don't want you to think like that. You got to have a plan to stay busy. Okay. Number three. Number four. Um, you shouldn't have stress in retirement. So if retirement makes you stressful, work it out ahead of time. Excuse me. Um, make sure that you have that worked out. And if you have a part-time job, hopefully the job you're going to work part-time is nothing stressful because you don't need that in retirement. You'd be surprised how relieved you're going to be when you stop that clock. Boy, it was great for me. I tell you, man, and not that my job was really stressful. I had great people. I had a great boss. I had a great, um, the overall supervisor was great. She was a great asset to the team and we were glad to have her. But you know, my time I knew that I wanted to walk away. I knew my father passed away young. When I say young, 81, 82, but you know, dementia set in at a much younger age. I want to say started probably 10 years prior. So he lived a long time starting to slip further and further as time went on. And I didn't want to, you know, that's why I took my social security at 63. I waited one year, see how things would follow it after I retired. So I, when I retired at 61, I, you know, I just slowly moved here to Texas and started my social security two years later. So I wanted to see how everything would fall into place, how all our annuities would settle in, our retirement accounts and so forth like that. You all got to get set up and planned a year ahead of time, mentally, you got to be ready for that. Okay, so, um, you know, you shouldn't have stress in retirement. Okay, the last thing I want to tell you, and it happens a lot when we first retire. You got a lot of things to do around the house. Mama's got a list for you to do. But you know what? That'll end quick. Within six months, you're done with that. So don't, and, I, and I, it happened to me, and I don't want it to happen to you. Don't let the bitter news become your only inspiration, right? For survival that boob to it boy that that'll tear you up i'm not i'm not sure what what you watch what news it, but they're all tailored to whatever political position you hold so fox news is you know it was one way leaning right sometimes too right cnn cnbc all those guys are more left leaning so whatever you know whatever way you're leaning towards be careful because there's more than just the truth out there particular their truth look at everything and I watch it in the morning just for 
the financial markets, and then I'll move on. Quick news in my local area is what I focus on. And that's it. And then I turn the TV off until nighttime. I get in my movie room. I got a big movie room in here. I was lucky to have that built. And I watch videos from YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, Netflix and a Amazon, and all that kind of nice stuff when new stuff does come out. So that's how I keep my nights busy or I'm uh, doing some research for these videos. But more importantly is, yeah, don't get caught up in the bitter news cycles. There's a lot more to laugh than watching news, isn't there? So anyway, I hope this helped you. Remember to subscribe down below if you thought this was worth something to you. Hit the like button because the algorithm here does help this channel uh, farm out to other folks that are looking to retire and look at retire smartly. Y'all take care and God bless. This has been the Retirement Train Straight Talk coming to you from Bernie, Texas. All right, out.